everyone. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I am uh, Jaya Ramanathan. I am the Chief Security and Governance Architect for our Advanced Cluster Management offering. And I have with me Yutao. He is uh, the squad lead for our security and governance capabilities within um, both of us work on this project called Advanced Cluster Management for Kubernetes within Red Hat. And we also have an upstream community called Open Cluster Management. So we are here to talk about um, just some uh, underlying principles and uh, overall architecture of our security and governance um, capability. And then we will delve deep into OPA and Gatekeeper and how that integrates with ACM. Okay. Um, this chart basically talks about the various security and compliance challenges that customers face when they adopt cloud. Uh, specifically, the key thing I wanted to highlight here is uh, customers generally have to meet various enterprise standards as well as industry standards. For example, if they are in regulated industries like financial, healthcare, etc., they have to meet standards like PCI, HIPAA, etc. And uh, they also want to adopt open technologies and they typically have to deal with more than one cloud provider, and they also need to go through multiple audits. So really what they're looking for is the ability to maintain uh, security and audit readiness on a continuous basis, and uh, they want to do that for an uh, open hybrid cloud. Um, so our approach um, to achieve that goal of sec continuous security and audit readiness is policy-based governance. So what do we mean by that? Typically, if you take a particular um, cloud environment, say uh, Red Hat OpenShift uh, cloud platform, and you want to secure it, um, you the customer would enable various security capabilities that OpenShift provides out of the box. And they may also want to use some capabilities provided by third party and uh, some homegrown capabilities as well. And and what they would like to do is to ensure that all these security controls are configured to industry best practices or their enterprise standards. And these standards could include standards from NIST, like NIST CSF, NIST 853, and also, like I mentioned, uh, industry segment standards like PCI, HIPAA, et cetera. So the subject matter expert for a particular control uh, knows very well how to get that control set up. But if um, you're talking about um, SRE uh, or a SecOps person who is responsible for ensuring that the configuration is set up properly, they may not be an expert on all the aspects of security. So how do we make this easy for them? So the way we make this easy for them is by ensuring that these best practices are represented as policies that result in a desired configuration state. So that's the overall approach and that's what we refer to as policy-based governance. And um, in order to do this, what we have built out is an extensible policy framework that can be applied across the entire stack. It allows you to incorporate multiple policy languages easily. And uh, so that's what we'll talk about in detail, the Gatekeeper OPA, which is uh, one of the policy languages. And we'll also, you will also show a demo on how that can be done. And uh, we provide a lot of out-of-the-box content, but we want to make sure those, that content is customizable and we need the ability to easily integrate third-party controls, um, et cetera. So that's kind of the overall approach of policy-based governance. So I want to introduce some terminology here just to level set um, what we are talking about here. So if you think about policy-based governance, right? So there is a policy authoring point where the policy is specified. Now this authoring point could be either the console or it could be a CLI or it could be GitOps. Our preferred methodology is GitOps, the reason being that allows you to manage policies just like you will manage source code. So you define all the policies in Git, and then within our ACM product, uh, you can define a subscription to pull those policies and deploy them onto the managed clusters. So that is our uh, policy management point. So this distributes the policy. It consolidates policy violations across a fleet of clusters. It also allows you to enter, integrate with enterprise tools uh, from a central point. Uh, because that is how customers view the cloud as just an extension of, the, of their existing IT infrastructure. So they want uh, the management to integrate with their incident management systems, uh, security operations center, their enterprise GRC tools, et cetera. And then the, when the policy gets distributed to the managed cluster, on the managed cluster, you have policy enforcement points. And these, these consume the policy and they return the violations. So an example of enforcement point would be the Kubernetes admission webhooks. 
and also the runtime controllers, Kubernetes controllers themselves, as well as several controllers that we provide, um, the configuration policy controller and the certificate management controller, as well as any operator um, that runs on uh, OpenShift managed cluster um, can also serve as a policy enforcement point. And one of, one of the examples of the operator is the compliance operator that allows you to implement security profiles on your OpenShift clusters. So, and then the policy enforcement point can optionally uh, invoke a policy decision point to check whether a specified policy matches how a control is configured. Now, in some cases, the policy enforcement point may itself do this check, but in other cases, um, you could invo invoke a PDP. And uh, the gatekeeper OPA integration is one such example, and Kubano is another example. So based on this uh, terminology, um, here is the overall architecture. So as you can see here on the management hub, um, this is where the policies are defined. And as I mentioned, it can uh, come through from Git or it could be um, through UI or CLI. And then from here, it gets distributed to the managed clusters. And then here you have the various policy consumers. These are essentially the policy enforcement points that I talked about. And then the, these results are then collated back and, uh, and so you have everything available uh, in a central manner. Uh, there are a few roadmap items that we are highlighted here where we want the policy framework uh, to associate Ansible pay playbooks to um, trigger automate, automated um, playbooks for um, policy violations. And we also want to integrate the policy violations and generate alerts to the observability component, which can then integrate with the enterprise incident management tools. And we also want to route audit logs to SIMS um, for the security operations center. These are all the orange items in this chart are things that are roadmap items. So now I want to drill down into details of uh, how we have integrated with Gatekeeper and OPA. So let me start with a quick overview of Gatekeeper and OPA. So Gatekeeper allows you to evaluate compliance um, of Kubernetes resources to specified policies. And what it leverages under the covers is OPA. And OPA is the policy engine that it uses. Now, OPA itself accepts policies in a language called Rego. So think of Gatekeeper as providing the bridge from um, OPA to Kubernetes, to the Kubernetes world. So it allows you to specify the policies as Kubernetes constraints, which can, which can in turn con contain the Rego constructs. And Gatekeeper can then consume those and um, because it reg registers itself as a policy enforcement uh, point through the webhook. And um, so it is now able to pass on those Rego constructs to OPA and use OPA to do the actual um, uh, checks of whether the policy is complied to. So the two scenarios to consider here. One is the admission scenario. So this is uh, executed whenever a Kubernetes resource is created or updated. And um, so, so think of it as once the gatekeeper policy is in place, then any uh, new resources that get created will be governed by this admission control. But what if uh, some resources already exist before you put that policy in place? So that is the second scenario, which is the audit scenario. So the audit scenario allows you to periodically evaluate existing resources against policies to detect any non-compliances. So in order to complete the picture, um, there were a couple of things we had to do in, in terms of how we integrated uh, Gatekeeper and OPA into ACM. First of all, we deliver, uh, we are delivering, going to deliver an operator that can deploy Gatekeeper and OPA. And uh, so this, is, this work is actually progressing in the upstream uh, community. And what we have done is we have forked that community and made it part of our open cluster management uh, downstream. Um, so we will deliver this as part of the ACM product. So one of the cool things about the ACM product is our built-in policy controller, config policy controller, can pretty much distribute any Kubernetes CRs. Now the deployment of operators itself is represented as a CR. So by delivering Gatekeeper OPA as an operator, now you can just define an ACM policy that ensures that this operator is deployed on the managed clusters. So that so that's uh, so we are going to provide that. In addition, uh, we also you can also use ACM to uh, define policies to on what Gatekeeper itself is enforcing, right? So the, the constraints that I talked about. So those can be also authored within uh, Rackham and uh, propagated to the managed clusters. 
And then, as I mentioned, there are two scenarios, admission and audit scenarios. So in both cases, we want to be able to detect policy violations. So in the case of the admission scenario, we just uh, we have a Rackham config policy that can process the events that are generated by the gatekeeper uh, webhook. And in the case of audit scenario, we look for uh, the status field in the gatekeeper constraints. So, so we are able to pull both this information back, as I showed in the architecture, into the central ACM hub and, um, and display the results there. So this uh, architecture diagram pictorially depicts um, what I talked about. So you have the Rackham hub, and then which is distributing policies to your managed cluster. Mm -hmm. And within the managed cluster, you have the config policy controller. And um, because we have this built-in config policy controller, the whole integration with Gatekeeper OPA is happening just through the authoring of these policies. So you really don't have to write any code. So, so we have a policy that uh, we have authored to deploy the Gatekeeper operator. So that operator is uh, then watches over this uh, Gatekeeper CR. And, um, and then it registers um, this webhook um, that monitors um, the audit, um, the admission scenarios. And then uh, you will also have a policy to deploy the gatekeeper constraints. So, and then we have a policy, as I mentioned, to detect the violations, two policies, one for audit and one for the admission scenarios. So you is going to give us a demo on, on these capabilities. Um, but before I hand it over to you, I also want to highlight um, that uh, we have also we also have integration in place with ACM for the OpenShift compliance operator, uh, which is another uh, an example of an operator that can be deployed on the managed cluster. And through a Rackham policy, we can make sure this operator is deployed. And we also have another policy that allows you to specify a profile, security profile that uh, directs the compliance operator to perform the compliance checks and return results back to us. So we'll show a quick demo of that as well. That kind of is the quick short overview, um, and um, I'm, I have in this uh, chart a link to our open cluster management community, um, and uh, you can connect with us there and um, uh, and ask any questions, etc. Uh, before I turn it over to you, I also want to give you a quick uh, demo of our open cluster management community. So as I mentioned when I uh, provided the overview of policy-based governance, um, typically you have uh, various controls in place, and the controls could be for security, could be for resiliency, could be for software engineering. And you want to ensure that all these controls are configured properly um, to industry standards and enterprise standards. And in order to do that, um, our goal is to codify those standards as policies. And uh, so it's very clear that um, Red Hat on our own cannot produce all the policies needed by all our customers. So that's why we have created this policy collection repo. So it, it's a spot for us to collaborate to build out these policies. So if you look at this repo, we have uh, two folders. We have a community folder and we have a stable folder. So the stable folder um, includes all the policies that are delivered as part of the ACM product. They are fully supported by Red Hat. And these policies are organized in terms of the NIST 853 standard. So you have various uh, uh, controls within this, uh, security controls within this catalog. And, um, and then for each of the controls, you can see we have defined policies. So, um, and you is going to show, show us a demo of the compliance operator policy that can deploy the compliance operator. And also this um, uh, essentially a security profile policy that allows you to uh, scan the managed cluster for this uh, particular security profile. And then for Gatekeeper and OPA, we have policies as well. Um, and then there is the other uh, folder here, which is the community folder. So the community folder is where we invite contributions from the community. And these policies are also organized in terms of the NIST 853 standard. And uh, the gatekeeper policies currently are in the community, and the reason is because uh, we are currently working on an ACM release where we are productizing this capability. So they right now sit in the community, so you have a gatekeeper operator policy that allows you to deploy the gatekeeper operator, and then uh, we also have other policies for gatekeeper contributed here as well. 
Um, so, so you can see here, we also have third party contributing policies here. So you will see here a policy from Cystic. Uh, they have contributed a policy for their operator. So uh, the reason I wanted to highlight this is to invite contributions from the community. So we are also working with various customers to uh, have them contribute here as well. So Jaya, um, if people, I think the OCM team it, group is um, meeting on a semi-regular basis now, or have they started the community meetings? Yes, we have yes. started the community, the open cluster management um, has a community meeting that happens weekly and uh, definitely, you know, uh, invite uh, participation in that as well. So I can uh, include that link as well into the uh, uh, chart. Okay, that would be great. Um, yep. And there's there's one quick question here before we go to the demo. Um, Tobias is asking if, if the gatekeeper community would announce mutating admission controller Will you integrate such an option into Rackham? Yes, uh, so um, we are active participants of the Gatekeeper community. Um, you who is here on the call with me along with a couple of others uh, from Red Hat are uh, active contributors there as well. So uh, we are watching the space there and our goal is to keep up with any enhancements that are made in Gatekeeper and um, uh, associate policies in Rackham to adopt those, yes. That's our goal. I am so grateful that you finally said that acronym out loud, and it's Rackham, because um, that's that's a wonderful way to pronounce it. So I'm going to use that going forward. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. Let me clarify. Rackham and ACM stand for the same thing. ACM mm -hmm. is Advanced Cluster Management, and Rackham is Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management, the same product offering. And our upstream community is the Open Cluster Management community, which is this one. And Ginny just shared a link um, in the chat for the open cluster management community. Um, there's a projects page in the repo um, that you can find um, the agenda and things like that for the upcoming meetings. Um, um, I'm going to stop sharing now and turn it over to you. Perfect. Yeah, welcome for the questions as well. Thank you. All right. Uh let me share my screen first. Okay. All right. Um, so, um, hi everybody. Um, my name is Yu Tao. So, I'm the uh, dev lead uh, for Recom uh, uh, Security and Compliance team. So, today I'm going to uh, uh, do a quick demo for how you can use Recom policy to install gatekeeper and then ap apply a gate gatekeeper constraint on the managed cluster and then report any violations it detects. So first of all, um, let me recap a little bit about the, the, the governance and risk architecture um, in uh, Rackham products. So if you go to our product uh, documentation, there's an overall architecture diagram here. So if you click on it, um, you will see a large diagram. So the, the, the governance policy framework we put in place, it really consists, consists of multiple pieces, right? So there's a one piece on the hub and there's a, a few pieces on the managed cluster. So on the left, so on the hub, so we have policy propagator, which is responsible for uh, propagating the policy from hub to managed cluster. So how it how it does is so when you create a policy, you need to also create a placement binding and placement rule. So if if you look at a sample here, so we have a policy CRD, which is the CRD that we use to embed your, your embed your the real policy. So if you look at the CRD definition here, so we have a field called policy templates. So inside templates, you define the actual policy you want to apply on your managed cluster. So you can you can you can create a policy with multiple policy templates using different policy language. And then once this is created, you create a, also create a placement rule. So since Recom is managing the per, is a control plane that managing multiple clusters, right? So um, so when you import a cluster, you can label your cluster. 
So the placement will simply here is you can select a class, cluster either you, uh, using the <coughs> the label selector. So we call cluster selector, but what really does is it's using labels on the cluster so that you can you can select a, a, a subset of cluster of a divine. For example, in this case, it's all your dev clusters. And then create a placement binding that bind the policy and placement to, together basically tell our policy propagator uh, to, uh, this policy needs to be applied to these cluster. So this is how we propagate policy to, uh, to manage cluster. So the reason I explained this is, so this is the framework that to distribute policies. And the actual, uh, actual, the actual policy that is being executed or evaluated on the managed cluster is uh, we call it policy controllers or policy consumers on the managed cluster. So the framework po uh, propagates the policy to managed cluster, distribute them to the managed cluster, and then hand it over to the actual policy consumer installed on your managed cluster. For example, the gate gatekeeper uh, uh, policy consumer or compliance operator or the out of box policy controller that we ship, recom ship, for example, the configuration policy controller. So once it is it reached the managed cluster, the, the actual policy consumer on the managed cluster will will apply, evaluate the, the policy passed uh, pa <coughs> passed in and then um, return uh, and then uh, generate results. And the, the policy framework will retrieve those results and return it to the hub so that you can uh, you can view the results uh, through a single control plane using Recom console. So that's the governance uh, framework, policy framework uh, we put in place uh, for Recom. Um, so in terms of gatekeeper policy, so from this big picture, so gatekeeper uh, controller is one of one of the policy consumer uh, from Recom policy uh, policy framework perspective. Um, now, so now let's take a look at the actual po uh, gatekeeper policy. So we've talked about that we can use a Recom policy to install gatekeeper, and we can also use a Recom policy to apply gatekeeper constraints and then re re uh, collect the results back to the hub. So this is done through defining Recom policy. So as Jay mentioned, in this uh, policy collection repo, you can, found, you can find the gatekeeper operator policy and also some, a few other uh, gatekeeper uh, policy that actually deliver, uh, applying certain constraints on your clusters. So let me take example here. Let me go through in details. Uh, for example, the uh, first, uh, the gatekeeper operator. Gatekeeper operator is is an F, is an effort that we will be actually involved in the upstream community. So the gate, what gatekeeper operator does is it packages it packages the gatekeeper as a, a OpenShift op operator. Um, uh, the operator is responsible for the life cycle of gatekeeper. So it can install gatekeeper, it can delete gatekeeper, and you know, of course, we are we will we are also working on upgrading those kind of stuff. So it controls the whole lifecycle of Gatekeeper. It simply makes installing Gatekeeper easier. Uh, with Gatekeeper being delivered as a Gatekeeper operator in ORM or in OCP catalog, you can use uh, a Recon policy to to install uh, to uh, to install Gatekeeper across all your managed cluster. So what you need to do here is you define a policy uh, CR a policy CR here, and then it includes multiple templates. So, uh, just very similar to how uh, how you install uh, an operator from ORM. So you create a namespace, you define the catalog source. Currently, the gatekeeper operator is not published yet, so we have to define a, cat a custom catalog source. Um, and then you create an operator group to tell operator which namespace to operate on. Um, and then the subscription uh, to subscribe the the, the catalog um, to pull down the gatekeeper uh, images, and and so and then um, and then you create this gate gatekeeper CR. This gatekeeper C, gatekeeper CR is part of gatekeeper operator, so it tells you how to configure gatekeeper. So if you create this CR, it 
the gatekeeper operator will install the gatekeeper based on the spec the configuration provide. If you delete this gatekeeper CR, the gatekeeper will, operator will delete the gatekeeper instance on your cluster. So here, as you can see, we are pulling an image from from upstream gatekeeper. As this is, uh, and then we enable the uh, admission events flag so that we can we can so that when there's a violation generated for uh, for for any new when there's a uh, violation generated uh, generated for any new ins new resource cr created on managed cluster that being that was that is, is blocked by the gatekeeper uh, it will generate a Kubernetes events so this is for the purpose this is for the purpose for Recom to be able to collect the result for admission admission um, scenario so then so once this this uh, this policy is created you you were and um by, uh, created uh, then uh, it will it will based on the cluster you selected here right so it will install the the gatekeeper operator on manage cluster so for this is the recom console so i have a, a gatekeeper policy operator policy installed here so as you can see this policy currently is being applied to this this managed cluster. Um, so if you go to this managed cluster here, you will, so this is currently being uh, this policy is being enforced and is compliant. So uh, this means the operator has been installed on your managed cluster. So if you go to the OCP console here on this uh, managed cluster. This is not a managed cluster. Let me open. This is the managed cluster. And then if you go to operator here, go to install operator, you will see gatekeeper operator here. So it is so very simple. So the you just need to use this operator. Um, you just need to use Rackham to install this operator for you. And then the gatekeeper is installed on your managed cluster. So now let's take a look at the how you can uh, apply gatekeeper constraints and then report uh, report violation back. So installing gatekeeper is just the first step, right? What what really what really has value is you want to apply gatekeeper uh, constraint and constraint template and then collect results back. So um, here we I create a sample. I create I create a gatekeeper sample policy here. So uh, I think it's easier to look at in here uh, in VS Code. So gatekeeper. So this is from the gatekeeper. Uh, uh, this is from the policy collection repo. Um, you can find it, you can find it in policy collection repo. So same here. We are using the same policy CR to distribute the gatekeeper constraint constraint template. As you can see, we have three templates here. If you look at the details, right? This uh, this is actually leveraging the configuration policy, which is the out of box policy consumership uh, uh, in Recom. So what it does is, um, what it does is, it can create, update, delete resources on on the cluster uh, based on the template object uh, definition you provide. So um, if you look at the the SR, uh, CR CR <clears throat> fields here so you create a configuration policy it has an object templates inside the spec so in this object templates anything defined in this object templates uh, template field is the actual CR you want to create um, in this example so currently uh, we are we are using compliance type must have which means you must have an object with this CR so look at this so this is a gatekeeper constraint template, right? Um, so basically, how we integrate is you are uh, if you have gate constraint template and constraint um, CR already, so you can use configuration policy to create it on the managed cluster. Um, so what you just need to do is you just need to embed the constraint template inside a configuration policy, and then put it into policy CR. Which is responsible for distributed across all the managed cluster. Um, that so that's how 
how the constraint template is, is delivered to manage cluster. So you don't, um, you don't have to write any code. You just need to create this policy and embed your constraint template. Same for the constraint here. Then the RACOM policy framework will create these two CRs on the cluster. You on the cluster, and then and then gatekeeper in, gatekeeper instance the controllers will take over and and evaluate these these two CR. So if you look at details of this CR, this is a sample namespace constraint template constraint I took from uh, from gatekeeper gatekeeper website so what it does is it requires any any names uh, any uh, this regal basically defines any input resource resource needs to have a field um, called label and inside that label field you need to have a you need to have a have a uh, have a label uh, with name with name with certain name so the name is being exposed as a configurable parameter called labels and in the, inside the constraint so you you're basically basically applying this constraint template um i'm here i'm applying on re, any namespace and also i restrict the namespace to be these two these um these uh, these two namespace because i i didn't want to apply all um uh want to apply to all namespace but if you remove these it will it will it will be all namespace and then, and then I want the actual labels to be gatekeeper. So, so for so for example, if 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 if, if so, if we want to test this uh, this policy uh, this gatekeeper constraint, basically we can just go ahead and create a namespace without label gatekeeper. Then it will be blocked. So let me do do that. Um, here I believe I've already uh, logged on uh, logged in. Um, onto the gate uh, the the manage cluster so let me double check so here on my manage cluster for this this deployment i'm actually applying to these two namespace so if i try to create a namespace so if i do this directly it will create a namespace without any labels so you can see here the gatekeeper actually uh, de uh, detect that and block the creation of this namespace. So that means the gatekeeper uh, constraint constraint template that we are that we are apply, uh, that we are applied using Recom policy is actually in place and 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 working. So that's how we uh, distribute and apply a gatekeeper constraint constraint template from Recom console by using a Recom policy. You don't have to log into each managed cluster and apply it. You just need to do it centrally through uh, through uh, Rackham uh, control plane. Um, the, then it's the, the violation part. We want to be able to collect violations. Um, so if you look at uh, look at the the other two um, templates that we are embedding in this policy CR. So here, as you can see. We create a, another configuration policy, right? This is for audit scenario. We we name it policy gatekeeper audit. So what it does is it uh, it is looking for any CR on a managed cluster called KS required label. This is the constraint that we created in previous object template. But additionally, we are adding additional uh, fields to it. So what it means is we want we want it is we are using must have compliance type here so what it does is we require we require on your cluster you need to have a cr called uh ns must have gatekeeper with the, this kind and api version additionally we expand the status field with total violation zero so this is for all these scenarios so the way it works is so once this is this constraint is being created on the managed cluster, the so gatekeeper audit controller will start to uh, scan your entire cluster and then try to figure out if you have every, any pre-existing uh, non-compliance exist. So if there is any, 
it will actually update the status field to tell you, oh, there, there are some, uh, some violations pre-exist. Um, um, so it will increment the number here. So um, currently we expect the number to be zero. So if it's not zero, then this, this policy will return non-compliant. That's how we collect the result. So if for, uh, for, that's how we collect the result for audit. And then let's look at the admission scenario. For the mission scenario, same, we are creating another configuration policy and we are looking for event. events for this constraint template, uh, for this constraint. Um, KS require labels and then with name NS must have go gatekeeper. So basically, so as you can see here, we are using compliance type must not have. So we expect there shouldn't be any events with these annotation on the managed cluster, exist on the managed cluster. If it exists, that means there's violations. There's, uh, there's something wrong. So this policy will return non-compliant. So now let's come back to the console here. So as I did, as previously I did this, right? I tried to create a namespace without label. So now as you can see here, it is for this, this uh, admission template is report, reporting non-compliant. And it tells, oh, there's an event exists in the gatekeeper namespace system. Um, we can click on view details and take a look at what, uh, uh, what exact it is. So, oh, there's a, this is, uh, this is uh, what is violating this, po this policy. So this event exists, but it should, it shouldn't. And if you click on view YAML, it is going to t uh, pull the, the details of this event. So as you can see, um, it tells you admission webhook, uh, <coughs> the, 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 basically the, the request is being denied by this constraint from gatekeeper. So this is exactly the same error you've seen here uh, in the command line. Um, so this is how we implement uh, uh, <coughs> uh, gatekeeper with Recom. So we implement, we integrate gatekeeper not only uh, just installing the gatekeeper, and then creating the gatekeeper constraint constraint template. But we also uh, collect the result for both at an audit and an admission scenario. Um, okay, that's my part for the gatekeeper demo. Uh, just to quick mention, uh, thanks to the power of the out-of-box configuration policy controller shipped uh, with Recom. So we are able to also of course, uh, install any operator. So for example, compliance operator here. So compliance operator. So uh, if you look at the YAML here, this, this policy is also, uh, you can also find it in policy collection repo. So you can find it here. So a very similar concept. We use configuration policy to create namespace, create operator group and create subscription. So then the compliance operator is installed on your managed cluster. And then you can trigger, you can trigger a scan. So from uh, using certain profiles. So here, if you look at the, the EA scan policy here, basically this policy triggers, uh, trigger, this policy triggers an uh, essential A security profile sc scan on your managed cluster. And we are also using configuration policy to achieve that. So by just create, using configuration policy to create uh, scan set binding um, com uh, compliance suite, um, and then collect the result back. So this is all done by doing, just creating configuration policy. So you don't have to write any code, any code. You just need to create a YAML of the policy and then you can integrate with compliance operator and as well as gatekeeper. Okay, that's it for me. That's great, thanks you. And, and if I could, this is uh, Kirsten Newcomer, if I could chime in just for a minute at the end of our conversation about the client compliance operator. Um, there was in chat uh, a conversation about the difference between the compliance operator and, and gatekeeper. Um, and I think both Jaya and I weighed in and, and you did a nice job also summarizing that here. So um, the compliance operator is specifically focused on, on regulatory controls, technical controls um, that map to regulatory frameworks. I just want to share, just because we're really excited, um, in addition to the E8 profile, which is an Essential 8 profile from 
Australia, there are some, uh, the, the compliance profiles available with the OpenShift compliance operator include some controls that uh, meet NIST 853 regulatory requirements, including at RHEL CoreOS, not just the Kubernetes layer. And we just shipped uh, a profile for, that is inspired by the CIS Kubernetes benchmark. So uh, check that out if when you get a chance. Um, and I don't know if there are other questions. Um, I, I've kind of been thinking of a few that I wondered if, that whether they might be helpful to folks. Um, and they kind of tie back to, to OPA versus uh, Gatekeeper versus the compliance operator. Jaya, you mentioned kind of three types of um, policies, policy categories. You mentioned security, resiliency. You also mentioned software engineering. Um, I think we have, I, I, I think maybe it would be useful to give some examples of each of them. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can I, can I share, grab the share again? Please do. I think you should be able to see my screen, right? It's coming. Yeah. There it is. Okay, so uh, this is the policy collection repo, and then if you go down to the bottom of this repo, this this page, we have a lot of blogs here, and one of the blogs I wanted to highlight here is this blog, um, and this blog uh, talks about how you can implement policy-based governance using our configuration management capabilities, right? And um, and here we talk about like Kristen, you were asking. Uh, there are there are best practices for uh, three areas that I outlined, which is security, resiliency, and software engineering. And this blog goes into the details of how you can of, of examples in each of these categories, right? So, for example, for security, security and regulatory compliance, uh, of of a, the first one we list obviously is the compliance operator, right? Um, so we talk about uh, how um, that can be configured using Rackham. And then we talk about the HCD encryption. So there's a policy that's available to ensure that uh, the Kubernetes HCD database is encrypted, right? And uh, and also you can remove the cube admin because the best practice obviously is to not use a single <laughs> administrative account, right? You want to be able to use uh, different accounts for different users to have accountability. And then policies for role-based access control um, and SEC security cost context constraints, et cetera, right? So these are examples of security oriented policies, but you can also have policies for resiliency. So for example, if, if you want to make sure that the logging operator is installed, because you want to be able to collect logs to check the health of clusters, et cetera. So, so you can do that. And many of the gatekeeper policies um, that we have as examples here, uh, I have to go back to the community. Um, so there are gatekeeper policies for ensuring liveness check is in place um, and make sure you're using the latest container image. You know, these kinds of policies, readiness probe is in place. Uh, these are all resiliency related policies, right? So, so those are examples of that. And then, and then you can also set up policies for uh, software engineering, which is, um, Things like you know, make, making sure that uh, Kafka is in place because that is your standard for streaming, right? Um, so, so those are the kinds of things you can actually author. And as uh, you was mentioning, I think the key point of this blog, if I go to the conclusion here, is right. Um, the point is all of these policies can be put in place without programming, and I I wanted to really highlight that because our built-in config policy controller, as I mentioned earlier can distribute any CR. So as long as you are able to represent a capability, say, for example, as an operator, an operator can be deployed using a CR, right? And then you can configure the operator. As long as it takes configuration as Kubernetes the resource, you can configure it. And if it returns the results back as CRs, we can process those as well. That's really uh, like you were showing in this demo. We were able to integrate with Gatekeeper because it met all those characteristics, right? So we didn't have to really write code. We just had to author policies. So I think that's the beauty of this approach is it's very easy to put these best practices in place uh, for your data operations without writing a lot of code. In fact, are there, without writing any code. Yep, Jaya, are there out of the box policies that uh, 
are available that that in the gatekeeper community i know you showed us uh the community for rackham the community branch what does gatekeeper provide out of the box um i think many of the policies that we have put here in our community were contributed by our com community of practitioners great uh, with okay. red, 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 right so they have their own community where they based on customer requirements, they're building out policies, right? And then once they feel that the, those policies are stable enough, they then contribute into this community, right? Okay. And, and then the next progression is, if we find that there are enough customers asking us for a fully supported version of that policy, then we promote that policy to stable, right? And it becomes part of our Rackham product. So that's kind of the three-step three, three step progression of how we are uh, building our policies and moving them into uh, fully supported versions. Great, that sounds good. Um, let's see, so you answered those examples. And um, another thing you mentioned early on in the conversation, you kind of mentioned, um, well, you, you used three different words and I just wanted to see if there was clarity. You said that there are, of course, admission controllers, runtime controllers, and then mm -hmm. later you talked about admission and audit. So I wondered, um, I think the admission controllers were fairly clear. Could you give us an idea of what some of the runtime controllers are? Yeah, so or is that the audit? Yeah. Yeah, let me go back to my, um, to sharing my deck. Jaya, we lost your voice again. Uh, can you hear me now? Yep, perfect. Yes. I was just uh, going and getting my deck. Okay, you can see my deck. So I think if you look here, right, uh, let me go into present mode. Okay, so the policy enforcement points, right? Um, these, are the, this are, these are the entities that consume the policy and return violations. So this is where, you know, you have the admission webhook. Um, so anything that is plugged in into the admission webhook. Now, Gatekeeper is one example of that, right? That is plugged into that. Now, somebody could write another webhook that is processing policies, for example, right? Mm -hmm. As long as those, um, um, that entity that is configured as a webhook is able to accept its configuration or policy as a Kubernetes CR, then you can use our built-in config policy controller to distribute that to that, right? So, so that is one example, right? And then there are, uh, Kubernetes obviously is, uh, has its own runtime controller. So for example, when we propagate a policy for etcd encryption, that is actually being enforced by Kubernetes itself, right? We, do, we don't have to do an external controller to enforce that, right? Uh, but see. then we have certain other controllers, like the certificate management controller is something that we provide. And that allows you to detect whether certificates are expiring, whether certificates uh, have wildcard, certificates are being used, et cetera, right? Those are policies that you can define and that can be detected using that specific controller. And Got compliance operator is another example, right? So. Okay, I had thought of things like Falco. So, um, so, yeah, so it helps me to understand that you mean it more broadly. So. Right. Yeah, Falco is here as well. So that's another example of a runtime controller. Great. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Also, just really quickly, because I know you and I responded to Carolyn in chat, but but maybe we'll just um, verbalize for, for everybody else as well. Uh, Carolyn had asked whether OpenShift is required on all clusters in order to use uh, policy-based governance. And, um, no, as, as Jaya said in, in chat, ACM itself runs on an OpenShift cluster, um, but ACM can manage other Kubernetes distributions besides OpenShift. Um, today, the compliance operator is only running on OpenShift. Um, it is designed to, the, the content that's available, um, which is written in SCAP, Secure Content Automate, Security Content Automation Protocol. This is um, a, a standard that's required by a number of our customers, which is why the compliance operator is written in SCAP. Um, it today, uh, we only have content for OpenShift and um, the operator mostly works on, on OpenShift. We want to extend it to other kube clusters in the future. Um, 
likely or at least uh, share it upstream to make it easy for others to extend it. Um, although, of course, the project is, is open source, so you can do that today. But again, ACM itself uh, can, can manage both OpenShift and other Kubernetes clusters with other Kubernetes distros. Yeah, just to complement, so the, the, the policy framework, the governance policy framework, so the hub piece does require OC, uh, OCP cluster, but the, the piece on the managed cluster, we do support other Kubernetes, Kubernetes um, flavor, but also, so, but the out of box controllers, for example, the configuration policy controller, it also support uh, other Kubernetes flavors. Um, so that means um, if you want to uh, integrate something that it's not running on, on Kubernetes cluster, uh, but you uh, but uh, but it can be integrated using configuration policy. It is you can still do that, and and also to add the gatekeeper operator, also works on non Kubernetes environment, non OCP Kubernetes environment. So, of course, if you want to use OL, OL, uh, OLM way to install it, you need to install OLM. But you can also install install it without OLM. So. The upstream version actually supports multiple um, way to install Gatekeeper. Yeah, those are all excellent points, you. I think, um, yeah, I wanted to add here, like, uh, um, if you go to this uh, Open Cluster Management Policy Collection report, the very bottom, that's where we have listed all our blogs, so you can take a look at it. Also, this is the Open Cluster Management community, so if you if you are interested in um, trying out um, this capability. Uh, that's a good place to start. And we have community meetings, um, so you can definitely get engaged there. And like you said, you know, for example, if you want to try this out on a non-open shift cluster, um, at least on the managed cluster side, um, definitely you're welcome to do that. Um, I have one question. This is Shana. Um, I have a customer who is running uh, currently right now 3.11. I noticed ACM uh, Rackham supports um, 3.11.200 and above. Um, and uh, some of the policies when I install it, um, it actually require, like, let's say, image uh, vulnerabilities, and it will require um, container security operator on the managed cluster. And um, I, I was just wondering, um, like, um, would all the policies will install operator for uh, the managed cluster if there isn't, or it is kind of a prereq depends on what policies that you're applying to the um, to the cluster you want. That makes sense? Like, because there, there are times that I would not know what my managed cluster has. Um, as an admin, I will want policy A, B, and C, and then when I create those policy and I figure out, oh, those cluster doesn't have it, uh, would would like like for a gatekeeper you will deploy the gatekeeper for the the cluster but gatekeeper is actually only support 1.14 and above and so there isn't does that mean that I cannot have gatekeeper policies on the 3.11 cluster? So yeah, I can take that. Uh, so yes, yeah, so. As I mentioned previously, there's two pieces, the framework itself and also the policy consumer. So the framework does work on OCP, uh, on OCP 311, mm -hmm. but the policy cons controller or consumer on managed cluster, it might not support OCP 311. Okay. So it's really case by case. So, so if you try to create a gatekeeper on 311, mm -hmm. um, um, then uh, since it's using configuration policy, it, it, it will try to apply the, those CRs, but since those CRs don't exi even exist right. on 311, it will return non-compliant. Okay, so we'll have to, all right, so I'll have to figure out which one is useful and which one is not. Um, yeah, and I think this is where I think the placement rule applies, right? So when, uh -huh. you, uh, when you are applying a policy to a managed cluster, you do that by using this concept called placement. Uh -huh. And one of the things uh, that you can use is you can assign labels to your clusters, and you can say that apply these uh, this policy to a cluster that matches this label, right? 
So, right. so what you could do is you could uh, assign labels to your clusters depending upon what version they are, et cetera, right? And mm -hmm. that will kind of determine, you know, which policies get applied where. Okay, that's a good idea, thank you. Um, just thinking out loud, because there's real customer questions. Uh, they um, they are on 3.11. I just want to kind of pick your brain, uh, taking the three, last three minutes opportunities. Um, uh, and <laughs> so they, they want to follow the NITS um, uh, standard, right? And so they're running, uh, they are moving to four, but they're not yet, they're still on 3.11. Uh, what what are the policies that you would recommend them to start on doing uh, with ACM? If there is any documentation, I can just take the link and read about it. Yeah, um, I think the, the the blog that I was sharing would be a good place to start. Um, okay. Let me, uh, I'll put that link I, in the I have the link. Uh, those yeah. blogs are so nice. I, I would recommend <laughs> you want to go read. I, I read them over the weekend. They are super. Okay. Helpful. Yes. Yeah. So, Jia, okay. we know the com the compliance operator is not supported on OpenShift 3.11. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a hardening guide for OpenShift 3.11, but um, okay. there's not automation uh, right. that I'm aware of. Does ACM have uh, checks for OpenShift 3.11, like that map to NIST 853 or some other NIST framework? I think the encryption policy at Siri, at Siri encryption should work on 3.11, right? Did did you support, uh, did OpenShift 4 support, sorry? Yeah, both OpenShift 3.11 and you can encrypt at CD in both OpenShift 3.11 and OpenShift okay. 4. How you do it is slightly different, however. Okay. Um, there are differences in implementation. I just didn't know whether uh, any of your other checks yeah, uh, I mean, and the other check is the certificate expiration. That definitely should work, I think. Uh, that, that's another area that you could look at. Yeah. So, Shauna, yeah. if, if it's for 3.11, feel, this mm -hmm. is Kirsten Newcomer, feel free to shoot me a note, uh, knewcomer at redhat.com. I'll see what I can do to, to help you out. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, and great th tool. Thank you. And there's one question from Tobias in the um, in the chat right now. A question regarding the roadmap item in terms of audit, et cetera. Does this include having a result that could state deny, but not denying the actual resource creation, and rather just firing a violation alert to S I E M? Oh. Meaning, yeah, okay, you read yeah. that. There's a lot yeah, of right. there. <laughs> I I think um, uh, the. The gatekeeper audit scenario, obviously, we support, right? Meaning, when, when I say support, that should work. Um, the roadmap item related to audit was more on the hub, being able to generate audit logs for policy lifecycle events and have them routed to SIMS. So that is something we are will work on in the future. But the, if you're talking specifically about the gatekeeper audit scenario, that'll be fine. You should be able to use that. Yeah, this was really, really good. Um, and we definitely sounds like we're going to have to have you back um, as the OCM community grows and more of these policies are out there. This is just a deep dive here um, and very good. You, thanks very much for the demo. Um, it was uh, quite quite good. So thanks, thanks again. And um, thank you, everybody, for taking the time and asking great questions so that I didn't have to. Um, <laughs> this, was, this was good. And thanks, Kirsten, for, for jumping in there. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.